Good morning, YouTube. Hey right, guys, it is Monday morning. You see the ground is wet. It rained overnight. Not terrible. Just kind of steady on and off for a few hours, but uh, luckily it happened overnight, not during the day. It didn't have to scare off any of the people yesterday, and it should not affect the people that want to come in today. And as you can see in that previous clip, and I meant to show you yesterday, but uh, Indian showed up. They were here yesterday morning when we uh, came out. And uh, throughout the day, Yamaha has showed up. Also, uh, Fast Lights is here now. They came in from Americade. And uh, this white tent right here is Mark. He is a leather vendor who came in from Americade also. So, even though today is day number three of the show, we've got a few more players in the game this morning. Anyway, the weather is shaping up to look like it's going to be a very nice day. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, some motorcycles pulling in out front. We still got about half an hour, 45 minutes until we actually open up this morning. So once again, I'm going to go try to knock out some emails. And, uh, but before I do, remember guys, if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Because when we hit that 10,000 subscriber mark, we are giving away a free set of love jugs. And if you own a Harley or an Indian, love jugs will make a world of difference on it. But you got to be subscribed. And we need everyone to subscribe. Also, remember, this week we are giving away a drone. So, you've got to be subscribed to that as well. And you have to leave a comment on the drone announcement video, which was opening day at Laconia Motorcycle Week 2022. Figured I'd get that part out early because I know some of you don't watch all the way through. I know that we have recently had uh, some pretty good increases in subscriber counts. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome here and basically give you a rundown of those of you who've been here for a while and you already know this i apologize but gotta explain it to the new people i'm amzel adam this is my company extreme bikes and if you haven't figured it out yet we travel around to the different motorcycle rallies all across the country we work on motorcycles and we really enjoy ourselves it's a lot of hard work but it's just what we do every day at the rally we start that motorcycle up and we let it run to show people that when you put love jugs and amzel on your motorcycle you can virtually extend the life of it indefinitely. It'll protect you from almost everything but a car crash. So if you find yourself finding this channel to be as awesome as everybody else seems to think it is, make sure you subscribe and follow along. All right, guys, as you can see there, Bill's trailer sales just showed up with that beautiful Peterbilt. He's gonna get back in and get set up today as well. All right, guys, it's about 10 a.m. A little bit of a slow morning out here. You know, we've had one bike in and out already, and we got a second one up on the lift. Still kind of messing around with that, uh, that golf cart a little bit. You know, there's motorcycles pulled in the parking lot, but there's not a lot of people walking around, so I'm thinking they might be just out doing demo rides. I haven't even started my motorcycle yet just because there isn't anybody walking up and down the aisle to see it so i figured you yeah, know why waste the gas just yet but i'm sure we'll have to start it here pretty soon
Okay, guys, you see Tony from Iron Braid pulled in yesterday and got all set up as well. All right guys, it's still been kind of a slow business day this morning. So what we've decided to do is tear in a little bit further on Chase's golf cart. So because we had no luck getting it running yesterday, this morning we decided to borrow a compression tester from Chris Waddell over at Cycle Solutions. And we went ahead and did a compression check. Now keep in mind, I don't have the tools here to do the primary compression check, but we checked the secondary. And typically you wanna see at least 100 PSI in a compression check, and we only had 40. So right then and there we knew the engine was no good and it was likely never going to run again without corrective action so chase went ahead and asked us to pull the cylinder head off to check the piston so we did and i could feel a little bit of rock a little bit of play in the piston so we went ahead and pulled the cylinder off as well and sure enough the rings got froze in there and when the rings froze in they weren't able to spring back out which caused excessive play and then because the cylinder is actually at an angle the piston laid down on the downside of it and it just wore it and scarred it and actually wore the edge off of the piston. Check it out. So for the top side, it doesn't look terrible. But look, as you come down here, you see the flat spot right there and all the rings are stuck and all the wear marks along the piston skirt. Looking inside the cylinder bore, you can see a lot of wear and the plating peeling off in there as well. So anyway guys, Chase has been searching the internet to see if he can find parts for this and there's actually quite a bit available for it. He found a used cylinder that is supposedly in good condition somewhere and then he can find a complete top end rebuild kit with the piston, the rings, the gaskets, the whole nine yards. So he's looking at to see if he can get that stuff here in time before we leave so we can hopefully try to get this rebuilt before the show is over. All right, guys, it is still a little bit slow today, so decided I'm gonna go for a ride. Got my helmet and my gloves, I'm running over here to Harley. I'm gonna try to ride one of the Pan Americas. I've never ridden one yet, and I am actually considering purchasing an adventure touring bike because I've been using my BMW R1100 RS Sport Touring as an adventure touring, and I'll be honest, the suspension on it just isn't suited for uh, what we do. And because I live up in the mountains, we have some really nice like forest service roads that are, you know, they're not like hardcore off-road. And uh, I, I think an adventure touring bike would be perfect for something like that. Now I'm not saying I'm gonna go buy a Harley, but I am curious on to, you know, how well Harley designed this bike. Is it so far out of their normal motorcycle build? And the people I've talked to that have ridden it so far seem to like it. But uh, I wanna make my own opinion. Now, I don't have a good way to set the camera up for the ride, so I'm just going to have to ride it and then tell you what I think when it's all said and done. All right, guys, so before taking the ride, I had to go get my little Harley Davidson card, fill out a bunch of information, sign some waivers, but we're all set to go now, so I'm going to check in and pick a bike. Hi, guys, this is Katie. She's going to get me all signed up for the ride. You want to go out on a Pan America? Pan America, that is correct. Would you like to take out this special or the regular Pan America? I don't know the difference. Tell so me. the special is going to have adaptive ride height, which means that the suspension is actually going to lower about a half an inch when you come to a stop. It's a pretty cool feature. Sure, let's give that a let's try. Let's try that one. All right, guys, so I am all geared up and ready to go. So. This is not a guided ride, but there are markers on the road to tell me where to turn and where to go. But no one's going to be following me, or I don't have to follow anybody else. It's a self-guided, but with directions. So here's the bike that we're riding. Once again, it's the Pan America by Harley Davidson. It's a pretty cool looking bike. All 
All right, guys, so I just got back from riding the, the Pan America, and I gotta tell you, it was actually pretty fun. Now, the course that they, they let us ride on was a really nice course, beautiful scenery, but a lot of it was through like, like country neighborhoods. It wasn't like a neighborhood neighborhood, but speed limit was 35. And there were some nice curves and everything, but it was a spot where, you know, I didn't want to ride like an asshole in somebody's neighborhood. So there wasn't an opportunity to really feel out the handling until I got back on the speedway property. There was a, a right hand 90 degree turn, you know, like on the street would be a 25 mile an hour turn. So I went ahead and sped up and, you know, I, I, I slid off the seat pitched my knee and my elbow into the corner and took it through and it actually handled very, very good for that one corner. I never really came to a full stop to really play with that adaptive suspension, but I did play with the mode control a little bit. So in that 35 mile an hour zone, when I had it in sport mode, which it's got plenty of power in sport mode, but the, the kind of on and off of the throttle a little bit was kind of jerky and, and twitchy. So. I actually switched it to rain mode while I was in the neighborhood. And it really smoothed out that throttle response where it wasn't so aggressive. And it was kind of nice at the low speed. Um, and it still has plenty of power in rain mode. It just doesn't come on as quick. So I, I do kind of like that feature there. So all in all, I really liked the motorcycle. My only real complaint was the engine was a little bit fuzzier than I would have liked it. I would think that with the way things are built nowadays, it wouldn't have seemed so like loose and fuzzy. Um, that the seat was very firm, and the hand grips were very firm. But that's all stuff that you know you're going to change and cater to yourself once you own a motorcycle. I think a really nice custom seat and a, a softer grip would be really nice. But the riding position was really good. Um, I, me personally, I might have pitched the bars up and out just a little bit, but I've got a pretty good reach. But I think it's a really good baseline motorcycle that's got room for improvement to customize to an individual's rider's needs.
right guys, we went through a really slow period there. We really had nothing to do but other than trying to find parts for that uh, golf cart. But now we got a few more bikes on. We rotated one out, two more in the lift. So maybe we'll get a little bit of afternoon sales and uh, be able to salvage part of this day because the sales were looking pretty crappy there for a minute. customer it's about five minutes until six and uh once again just like last week this parking lot is pretty much cleared out again there might be six or eight bikes out there but as you can see not very many so we're gonna call it the day we're done uh sales were definitely subpar from yesterday what's our town a little warmer today it's 191 Either way, like I said, sales are a little bit subpar today. Definitely not as good as the last two days. Not that they were good, but they were better than today. So that's it. We're done for the day. Don't know what to store now. We were gonna run and go shopping, but uh, one of the things I wanted to go get is not in stock within 125 miles. So I don't know if we're gonna go do that or not now, but it's have to wait and see. So you guys will have to wait and see. Hi right, guys. All right guys, Katie and I drove into Concord, New Hampshire after closing. We're gonna go try this place called the Red Arrow Diner. We've never been here before, but it's got really good reviews online. So we're gonna go give it a try. And we'll tell you, tell you what we think, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell them what they think. That's not, not my place. All right, guys, check it out. We come in and there's a list of famous people that have been here. Should we add Amazon out onto the list? Right down there, right through the Diane Sawyer. Well, guys, I think I have to say we have found a new favorite restaurant in the New Hampshire area. It turns out the Red Arrow has got four locations. Now, they stay 24 hours on sign, but apparently only the store in Manchester is uh, open 24 hours anymore. I guess during COVID, they stopped it, and the other three stores just never went back. Turns out Guy Fieri did an episode of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives here, and Katie, he used to love watching that show just because, you know, we're foodies. Um, President Obama's been here. President Trump's been here. Mitt Romney's been here. There's a whole list of people that have been here. Really good food, really good atmosphere. Katie got the Reuben and I got a, a pastrami on rye and both were absolutely fantastic. I even got a bowl of chili. I mean, just really good, fresh, hot food. It was awesome. Guys, I think that's gonna end this video. Once again, I thank you guys for watching. Remember, if you want the drone giveaway, go back to the video for the drone giveaway and leave a comment. By the way, a lot of people would want that. You know, most of my videos get uh, you know, a couple dozen comments or so. That one, when I went to bed last night at like 2.30 in the morning, it was already up to almost 400 comments. And I know that more have come in through today, but I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. So it's just crazy how many people have made a comment there. And I really appreciate it. And I think that's why that was getting so many views. The more you guys comment, the more YouTube pushes the video, which means the more people view it means the more people that are likely to subscribe, which means the sooner we will get to that Love Jugs giveaway as well. So guys, keep doing what you're doing. It's freaking awesome, and I love every single one of you for doing it. Um, but that's it. We're done for the day. So uh, thanks for watching, and until the next time I see you.
keep those engines running. Look at that. Perfect. I didn't mean to do that. Old glory right there. 